In this video, we're going to go over the Lab 10 class data analysis. So I have my class data sheet pulled up here on the right and the lab worksheet on the left. So class data questions are first one, very similar to what we've been doing, calculate and report mean and standard deviation for path length and Shannon entropy for both CX, CY directions and eyes open, eyes closed. Okay, easy enough. We'll just start, start doing some means or averages here. And then standard deviation.s sample, because that's all we got here is a sample, not the population. And we'll go across. And again, what we've done before, I'm just going to go all the way across. Doesn't say do it for the experimental error or anything like that, but uh, we are going to use the mean. We are going to use the mean of that. So I'll just delete those standard deviation since I won't need them. Okay, and then we got mean standard deviation CX oops, and CY. Okay, CY, CY, Shannon entropy, Shannon entropy. So cool, we can just go ahead and copy, paste value, overwrite, sorry, overwrite. And then, same thing here. Then we can touch that on up, make it a little prettier. All right, cool. Not too bad looking now. Okay, now our next one is create a box and whisker plot, and this is going to be of the path length, CX and CY, between eyes open and eyes closed. All right, we're going to have to do, we're also going to be doing a Shannon Entropy one, so I'm going to do sort of a double duty here. Um, we're going to highlight those, and I'll start right here. So this will be CX. EO, CXEO. That tells me the direction and eyes open condition. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the eyes closed ones right next to it. Or right, right under it. It will appear on the graph right next to it. Uh, so this will be CX eyes closed, EC. length and Shannon entropy. Okay, and then we'll do the uh, CY now. Oh, I had some stuff down here. Ah, this was from a previous previous thing I was doing. Okay, so this was CY um, eyes open. Actually, I'm going to edit this just so this, the X is all lowercase, you know, it just matches. Okay, there we go. And then our last one, eyes closed. See why? Eyes closed. Okay. And then our first one, path length. Again, I held my shift command or shift control and I just hit my down arrows. Easy peasy, or you can highlight it with your mouse and whatnot. All works. Then we'll go to the histogram under insert, box and whisker. And this will be our path length one. And so we have CXEO and CXEC, so we can compare the same direction with the eyes open versus eyes closed right next to each other, and then CY, eyes open, eyes closed. So that's why we did, did it like this, so we can differentiate these nice and easy, easily and keep them all on the same graph. And since they're organized as such, we can now do the Shannon entropy without having to do any additional copying and pasting, which is always nice. Whoops. Accidentally grabbed that instead of the chart. Okay. So.
So I'm going to just change this since that's a rather large number. I think it's around 8. Let's try 8. And we can go to 9. Here we can go to 0.1. Yep, not too bad. Looks looks a little bit easier to look at now. Um, so just kind of based off of at least my charts looking at them, I probably won't find anything just because these two, the boxes overlap, the percentiles overlap, the 70, 25 to 75% overlap. Usually that's a pretty good indicator that uh, you probably won't find anything. Um, before you even run a test. Uh, this one goes completely within this box, so it's kind of all over the place for the eyes closed position on the CY. And then same thing for our Shannon entropy here. Sorry. Anterior post here or CX direction seems a little bit more kind of what we were expecting a little bit. Um, CY direction though, eyes open versus eyes closed. That eyes closed position is all over the place. Very interesting. At least that's what my data shows. I'm not sure what yours, yours shows. All right. So we could just then copy and paste these in here. Easy peasy. And now we got our first hypothesis, CX path length between eyes open and eyes closed. Okay, we're going to run a um, two sample assuming equal variances. equal variance is assumed. Okay, CX path length, eyes open, and eyes closed. Those are our two comparisons. Um, I didn't I didn't highlight them, but I, kn I know what the left one and right one is going to be because of how I did it. That's okay. Um, so, hypothesized difference is zero. Um, I'm going to call this path length CX. PLCX, just so I can differentiate these things out. Uh, or you could do it the opposite way, because it's named kind of like that CXPL, um, CX path length over here. Hit OK, and we got our things. OK, so variable 1 was our um, eyes open, and variable 2 was eyes closed. And we cannot reject the null hypothesis, at least I can't. I'm not sure what yours shows. By my data, I cannot reject the null hypothesis, though. Um, these variances look fine. A little bit large for the eyes closed, but not too large. Okay, now we can go ahead and work on the second one, which is CY path length. I have to replace that. And now make sure to rename that CY path length. Okay, same thing. I cannot reject the null hypothesis here. Um, one interesting thing is we got a very large difference in these variances, at least from my data. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If I run, I'm not going to. If I ran an F test, though, this will most likely, because it's greater than four times the difference in variance. This is eight, eight and a half times difference in variance. Um, since this is just for, this isn't for something we're publishing or anything like that, it, we're going to keep this, at least I'm going to keep this, uh, but we would typically not keep this. We would, we actually cannot assume equal variances for this one. Um, so we'd have to actually go and run a uh, equal variance is not assumed, which I, I'm just going to show you, but you do whoops, do not have to run it yourself. We'll actually be running one, uh, if I remember right, next week. Um, see why path length. We'll be running one for one of our things next week. And it looks pretty much the same. Um, I mean, you can see variance is all the same. The only thing that's missing is that pooled variance. And that's 
one of the things that works when we're doing equal variance is assumed, but when it, we can't make that assumption, we can't do a pooled variance, which means we also can't do a regular Cohen's D. We're going to have to get around that somehow, um, which we will in, uh, when we get to it. Um, but again, that p-value, we still cannot reject it. I'm just going to delete this because I'm not going to use it. Um, now, let's hop over to Shannon Entropy, CX Shannon Entropy, and then we'll do CY Shannon Entropy. All right. I'm just going to use SC Shannon Entropy. Okay, this one I cannot reject either. Failed to reject. Okay, and that's about double, eh, a little bit less than double. Yeah, 1.61, cool. And our last one, C, Y, Shannon Entropy. Okay. All right. Cannot reject this one either. And this is just about just a little over half. 1.6, yeah, 1.6 1.72 actually would be about half uh half the halfway there. So, we cannot reject any of these. We failed to reject, at least I I did for my data. I'm not sure what your data looks like. Um, so I'll just have to interpret as such. Now we got our co, co Cohen's D absolute value of our mean difference divided by square root of the pooled variance. So again, this would be a very small like negligible effect anyway if there was a difference because um, that's rather s very very small let's see I was on D8 okay this one's rather large okay uh, it's not large it's about medium give or take same thing and same thing so you know again I was I'm getting kinda close here and there might be something if we collected a bunch more data um, just our 15 subjects that we had we couldn't we weren't able to reject we failed to reject um, looks like there's a lot of variability in the medial lateral direction people that people will move again based on my data I'm not sure what yours shows you'll have to just look at that but we can definitely tell that from here the, the range of difference between these two it's rather large um, eyes closed um, seems to have a lot more variability so some people seem to move a lot more um, in terms of path length just a little bit it's you know again this isn't that much it's a little th these are in meters right here this is 0.4 meters. Whoops, these are in millimeters, it says. They're definitely in meters. Um, but I was about to say, I think it said millimeters on there for a second. But uh, yeah, they, these are definitely in meters. Um, but that about covers it for most, most of this. You're able to copy and paste these values in as well. Again, it's always good to check to make sure that everything looks like it lines up right. And when I was looking, I was like, wait, did I put meters for that? Um, so yeah, again, we're not talking that much. 0.3 versus 0.4, again, that's 10 centimeters right there. 10 centimeters difference, um, or 0 0.1 meters. Uh, so overall, it's you know a little bit more that the center of pressure moved in the anterior post here, the lot of it, more, lot more variability, and then even more when we're looking at um, the medial lateral direction. Uh, 
so there's a lot of things that can can talk about with that uh, or think about with that in terms of um, okay we, we reduce the visual feedback and with that um, person was just kind of going off of feel and uh, both pressure on the floor as well as the pressure with the feet in the floor um, and then we also have the vestibular system um, as our sort of feedback so we don't have any more visual not too much auditory in there um, but we have a few things going on just seems like the eyes closed really increased a lot of the variability of what we got so some people seem to if we had someone all the way down here it seemed like they might have frozen up a little bit more not moved as much and then these people were moving a lot more than they probably were in here so there's there's a few ways to sort of look at it but we can't definitively say anything um, just what it looks like people might be doing uh, but there's just a lot of variability that we didn't really find anything the only real thing we can kind of say is it's pretty variable um, uh, when you're when you're seeing how people respond and that can come down to our experimental control of things where maybe we didn't have everyone kind of standing the exact same or we weren't as stringent with how people we we directed how people should stand or anything like that uh, there's a lot of things that can go that can cause these sorts of things so as far as I can say right now is we did not have any any differences any differences that we can say um, are differences mind you in the statistical sense everyone likes to say statistical statistically significantly different uh, that significant words gotta get thrown out I, I absolutely abhor it um, it's just you can say it's different <laughs> we cannot say these are are different in terms of their means right now um, there's a lot of variability though we can see in that CY CX EC um, between Shannon entropy and the um, path length otherwise um, that about covers it if you do have any questions please contact your lab instructor and if you don't have any, I'll see you in the next video.